Hi everyone, it's Don from Don Family Vacations and this week we're going to talk about that ultimate cruise. The cruise that's on everybody's bucket list. The world cruise, that once in a lifetime experience where you're gone for 100 to 168 days visiting multiple continents and tons of ports and destinations. And it can be a little tricky to organize and there's some things you really need to know before you start looking into a world cruise. So let's get into it right after this. So again, we're talking about that ultimate cruise. We're talking about that once in a lifetime experience when you're gonna travel the world and you're gonna be on a ship for 100 and 150, 160 days, multiple ports. So there's some things you really need to know before you book those cruises. So I'm gonna give you 10 tips. So let's start off with number one. Make sure that you're organized with your passports and your visas and that they don't expire uh, some ports won't let you in to their country if your visa expires six months from the date that you're visiting. So make sure your visas and your passports are good for the entire time that you're on your cruise. That's a very important tip and make sure that you contacted your travel agents and you know every single country and port that you're going to exactly what you need so you're prepared and you're not scrambling at the last minute. Number two, again, with the help of your travel agent, go over your itinerary, go over the ports of call, and make sure you find out what kind of vaccines and get vaccinated. Because some countries won't let you in, for one. Also, uh, some have a lot more uh, possible diseases when you're a North American traveler and you're traveling to a, a, say an Asian culture where, well, they just eat different foods and they have different uh, environment and different animals and you never know what you can come down with so and if you say to yourself well I'm not probably not gonna get off the ship at those ports uh, yeah but other people are and then they're gonna bring those back onto the ship with you and if you're not vaccinated you may contract whatever they've come back with so make sure you get vaccinated it's a lot more fun when you're not sick on a world cruise trust me Number three, a lot of people skip this because they say, well, I'm going to be gone for so many days. Uh, travel insurance. Yeah, but I'm gone for a long time. And if I'm gone that many days, travel insurance can get quite expensive. Yeah, well, you know what? Some cruises, uh, say you're taking a Quinard World Cruise uh, in a balcony cabin or a mini suite, they can run you up to $200,000 for a couple, uh, if not more. Uh, and then you take your cruise and you get off your first port, it's raining, you slip on the sidewalk and you twist your ankle or you break your leg. You've just lost $200,000, plus you have medical expenses in the country that you're not with, plus you have to get yourself a hotel possible if you miss the ship, you have to fly yourself back to, your, to the United States or Canada or wherever you're leaving from. It can be astronomical expenses, so it's, it's worth, if you're spending 200 and some thousand dollars on a cruise, it's worth spending eight to ten thousand dollars to make sure that everything is covered and you're safe on that trip. So count insurance as part of the expense of going on a world cruise. You're going to be visiting tons of ports on this trip. Uh, some cruise, say the one that I looked at the other day, had 78 stops. 78 different ports you're going to be visiting so that's a lot so don't wing it once you know where you're going once you know your itinerary look at the destination look at the ports and find out that one thing between between who's going in your party that one thing at each port that you'd really like to do uh, if you're a, a big shopper in countries and you like to visit places that you can't see in the United States or Canada or uh, London, say you're in uh, Singapore and you want to visit uh, certain malls and that, see the shopping that's there and what's available. Well, put that as your itinerary for that port. That way, when you leave the port, you're going to have seen at least the one thing that you wanted to do and then throw in other things as time permits. Number five is downtime. There's going to be downtime 
because you have to get to the ports you're going and sometimes there's three, four, five days at sea to get to the next destination depending on the cruise. So make sure you're choosing a ship as well that has enough on board to keep you occupied during sea days. If you're on a smaller cruise, it's a luxury cruise line, but it's a smaller ship, it doesn't have a theater, uh, you're going to be stuck in your cabin. Um, yeah, it can be a long six days at sea, especially when you've already been at sea for 50 days, like uh, on the cruise. So where if you choose like the Queen Mary 2, uh, for instance, they have a uh, you know, four to 8,000 book library, they have live performances, they have lectures, they have seminars, there's all kinds, they have movie theater going on. There's all kinds of things to do because it's a larger ship and they have more th things that they can offer you. So keep that in mind. If you're a person that's going to be spending a lot of time on the ship, you want a ship that's going to have things for you to do that you're going to enjoy. Number six is don't overpack. Yes, you're going for a long time and there's going to be formal nights and there's going to be things that you need to dress for. But you know what, if uh, you have one tuxedo and a couple suits, that's enough for formal nights, no matter how many there are. You can get your clothes cleaned on board. Uh, they, you can uh, have dry cleaners, your butler will pick them up, your stateroom cabin attendant will pick them up. It's a lot better than packing 57 suitcases and stacking them all up in your hotel, in your uh, cabin and trying to find them all when you're ready to go to a formal night. Uh, one person I talked to actually you know, packs just a few things, uh, maybe four or five suitcases, and then they pack three or four empty suitcases. And I said, oh, for souvenirs and things like that. They said, no, because when we're in different ports, depending on where we are, we might buy some clothes that fit that area that we're in and then we're going to be in for three days. Instead of packing everything and guessing what we're going to need, we're going to see what we're going to need based on the weather that we're there and uh, what's around us. So that's a brilliant idea on my part that I thought, yeah, bring some empty suitcases and buy some clothes on your trip. After all, this is supposed to be a once in a lifetime trip, that ultimate vacation. So do you really want to scrimp and save to bring a couple extra t-shirts and a couple pair of socks extra when you can just pick them up in shore? One of the things that can get tiresome, I know it's hard to believe, but having somebody prepares, you know, big fancy dinners every night for you. Sometimes after say 40 days at sea, you just want to have some bacon and eggs for breakfast or you just want to have a hamburger. Uh, maybe some fried chicken and some french fries. You want comfort food. Well, just ask for it. If it's not in the menu or, uh, you know, in, you don't feel like going to a buffet, uh, just talk to your cabin steward, just talk to your butler uh, if you're on Quinard, and just ask for it. The chefs are happy to oblige. They will make you anything they want if they can do it. And 99% of the time, they can easily make comfort food uh, no matter what you're looking for. Uh, if you're not a big fan of fancy sauces and things like that, you could just say, hey, I want, I'd like some steak and I just want salt and pepper on it. I don't want a bouillabaisse and I don't want a, a peppercorn sauce. I just, I just want my steak. Ask for it and they'll make it for you. Number eight, choose your cabin accordingly because you're going to be spending a lot of time on this ship, especially if you're taking, say, the ultimate cruise of, say, 168 days at sea. 168 days at sea, you're going to want to feel like this cabin is your home. You don't want to pick an inside stateroom with two twin beds, no side tables, and a small bathroom, and no view. Can you imagine how long it would feel when you're at a six-day stretch when you're at sea and you're in that cramped quarters? and plus throw in all your suitcases and things like that. No, book a stateroom based on what you can afford. If that's all you can afford and you want to do a world cruise, go for it. Hey, perfect. You know, if the ports are your destination, that's what you want to go to. But if you can afford a balcony suite or a mini suite or even just a, a grand suite on some of these boats, go ahead and do it because the more room you have in your cabin, the more enjoyable your experience is going to be on board those ships. Number nine, this should go without saying, make sure you let your bank and your credit cards know you're on a world trip. Don't just say you're traveling. Let them know you're going away and you'll be visiting different continents and different cities and different ports. 
because if you just say you're traveling and then they see, oh look, there's four charges in Miami because you're staying there for a couple of days before you take your cruise and then all of a sudden, oh, there's a charge in Singapore a, few, uh, a week later. They may freeze your card, they may freeze your bank account until you contact them for security reasons to make sure people aren't ripping you off. Uh, so make sure you let them know. Also, have a trusted friend, a family member, or somebody stop by your house. If you're gone for uh, you know, four months, uh, anything can happen. You could have a bursted pipe. Uh, you could have a break-in. Uh, people see, hey, that house is dark. For four months, uh, there's a prime opportunity for someone to break in and steal all your stuff. So have somebody stop by at least once a week to check on the place and uh, keep in contact with that person either through email or a phone call every once in a while just to see how things are going for peace of mind. You don't want to come back after having the most ultimate vacation of your lifetime and find out that your house is flooded or you have no belongings left inside your building. And lastly, number 10, this can be is a personal thing for everyone. Personally, myself, uh, the longer I'm going to be on a ship, I want the largest ship possible. First of all, I get less seasick if I'm on a larger ship. I don't feel the waves as much. I feel a little safer as well. Also, you know, it's the same as when you're flying. Uh, you feel a lot safer in a jumbo jet than you do in a Cessna. So it's just, it's, it really doesn't make a difference, but in your own mind, it does. And if you're crossing the Atlantic, do you want to be on a ship that's 400 feet or do you want to be on a ship that's 1,000 feet? Uh, yeah, I'm taking the big ship myself because uh, I want to feel as secure and safe as possible. Also, uh, the smaller ships can get into smaller ports and smaller destinations. So if you're that person who wants to see the culture of an area, and the smaller towns of areas, and maybe a smaller cruise ship is what you're looking for. But if you're a person who's okay with staying in, you know, stopping in bigger cities like Dubai and Singapore and uh, Sydney, Australia and Southampton, then you're gonna wanna be maybe on a bigger ship. And if you'd like to have amenities when you're at sea, like uh, movie theaters and libraries and lectures and guest performances and Broadway shows, well, uh, 400, you know, a 400 foot, 500 foot cruise ship probably isn't going to have those amenities that's available to you. Uh, they're going to be more port oriented cruises. So this is a personal thing. Choose and investigate. Talk to your travel agent. Find out what you're looking for. Let them make suggestions to you before you say anything like book it then look into those ships. So if the person says, well, you can go with the seaborne cruise, like some of these, which are smaller ships, but they're luxury and they're first class organization, or you can go with Quinard, which bigger ships and their first class organization, but it's gonna cost you a little more money, uh, but there's more to do when these are their ports and these are their seaborne ports. Make your own comparison and then decide which cruise line is right for you before spending all that money and booking it. So I know for a lot of us cruisers, the long 168 day world cruise is an ultimate cruise, a once in a lifetime, hugely expensive. Um, if you wanna give it a try and see if you're gonna like it, you can buy a, what's called a portion cruise. So if a cruise is 100 and some day long, you may be able to buy a stop from one port to another that's say 31 days long to get your feet wet, to see if you're going to enjoy it. And uh, it definitely won't cost you the same price as it would for a 178 day cruise. So that might be a good starter step for some people. If you've never cruised before, I don't recommend saying, I'm going on a world cruise, no matter how much money you have and can afford it. You have, you know, I just won $50 million in the lottery. I want to take a world cruise for $500,000, spare no expense. Uh, you know what? Take a two-week cruise first in a luxury stateroom on a large ship and see if you like it because uh, there's a big difference between spending seven days on a ship and spending 178 days on a ship. But for those of you who love cruising, there could be no more better experience in the world than those kind of cruises, especially if you love to see different cultures and different ports and you have the time and you can you're not worried about the money, it's fantastic. So 
I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope everyone who's listening gets a chance to do that world cruise someday. I hope I get to do it. Quick, buy a bunch of vacations from me so I can go on these cruises, because right now I can't. Uh, I can go on the partial cruises, but I can't go on those, you know, those ultimate cruises. But someday, it's on my bucket list, and I'm going to work towards it. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more cruising tips and more cruising vis uh, videos uh, with different cruise lines and uh, you know, world destinations, including destination weddings that are coming up soon, we have a video. Uh, so please uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we have videos every week. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, we'll see you next week.